Walter, you've been here eight years for the National Cornbread Festival, and we love you so much, and we want you to be a friend of our town that we want you to have a key to the city of South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Now, folks, before we go any further, we need to go right in here, and we need to see all the variety of lodge cookware there is out there, because you need to know about lodge to understand about the festival. Because after all, lodge is cornbread's best friend. Hey, Mark. Hey, how you doing, Walter? Mark Kelly, hey, Lodge Manufacturing nice to see Company. You. Welcome to South Pittsburgh and Lodge Factory Store. When people think lodge, they think skillets. Yes. Wrong. Totally wrong. Okay, but you do make skillets. We make skillets. We have the largest selection of skillets, cast iron skillets in the market, but we also have over 28 Dutch ovens. And Dutch oven cooking is suddenly the thing. The thing. We have indoor Dutch ovens and campfire Dutch ovens. This is a fantastic pan. I know, I own one. And uh, you could do a steak in here that's so much better than one done outside on a charcoal grill, but don't you tell anybody I told you that. This is, uh, this is what most folks grow up with to cook cornbread. You can use mm -hmm. a larger one, but this is really great for cornbread or eggs. Yeah. And this is a pan, this is what we call our chef skillet. It's a 10 inch skillet, it's a little shallower, a little lighter, but it's great for omelets or any soup cooking. That's right. And uh, very, very popular, and like all of our items, everything's foundry seasoned now. The thing with cast iron, in case there's somebody out there that doesn't know about the heat distribution, is the best in the world. Can't beat it, can't beat the heat consistency and distribution, and the, the really wonderful thing about cast iron is the variety of cooking applications frying, sauteing, baking, whatever you want to do. And if you take care, if you're sweet to this cast iron, if you maintain the seasoning, it'll be sweet to you. Now, Mark, I need to know something. Yes, can, sir. Can you tell me how all this gets made? Oh, it's, it's a long process and a detailed process, but we'll go through all that in our foundry right next door. Now, I promised you folks that we were going to see how this is all made. And Mark, you tell me that that's what you're going to show us now. That's all we're going to see. And the amazing thing is, Walter, Nobody else knows what we do in the United States, and nobody makes cast iron better than Lodge Cast Iron. Well, I knew that, but now we'll see how it's done. We'll see how it's done, and the thing you gotta remember, every step of the way, nobody goes through the thorough process we do to make the best cast iron and the healthiest cast iron. In the world. In the world. All right, let's go do it. Thank you, sir. The really amazing thing is that the technology to make cast iron hasn't changed since the 13th century. But if you don't check it for all the various factors that are important, you don't get that quality sand to make the mold. The quality that shows up in the piece every time. Every time. Now when you start to make a piece of cookware, skillet, Dutch oven, whatever, you're dealing with a mix of metals? Two, diff two primary metals. Pig iron, mm -hmm. which is iron poured in little pigs. Right. And then we, use, we recycle steel, which is stamped steel from a Lazy Boy factory on the other side of the mountain in Manchester. Part of that iron mix is iron, cast iron cookware that we inspected and didn't meet our criteria, so we remelt that. We melt every batch at 2,800 degrees, and we pour at 2,500 degrees. One of, the, one of the really great ingredients for us is we have automatic pouring. It's all computerized measure. The measurements are computerized. So we get exactly what we want, the exact amount, every time. It doesn't mean that everything's perfect, but we're able to inspect it and make sure the quality's there. It's all about quality for us. Now, we're gonna move this, we're gonna take that molten metal, it's gonna go get poured into a, a mold, a if mold, you will. A cast iron mold, a, a sand mold. From there, it goes down the line, and, it's a, and, it, and it, the, the metal cools. As it's going down, it's cooling, and then it's just like an egg hatching. When it gets to the end of the line, it falls down, and the sand starts shaking off, and the cookware goes one way, and the sand goes another. After it falls into that one area, it goes into an, a, a big tumbler and it shakes off the sand. And there's pieces of cast iron that grind off the burnishes and the sand. Yes. At the end of that barrel, the burnish, the, the pieces of metal, the pieces of cast iron go to the left, the cookware goes to the right, and it goes on a belt, and it's shaking, mm -hmm. shaking. And at the end of that belt, it goes into a really interesting area where very tiny steel BBs are sh shot onto it, very much like a high pressure hose to clean off more sand. It goes through an inspection process and we have people all the way through. A, a gentleman looks at it, and if uh, there's a burnish on there, he'll grind it off. Yeah. If not, it goes along the way. And from there, it goes to a, a really interesting thing where the only people in any segment of the cast iron, whether it's cookware or 
pieces for a lawnmower or whatever. We have a river stone and water and soap wash mm -hmm. that cleans off the remainder of the sand. Really interesting process. And so we come out now with a cast piece that except for its color, yes. would be what we recognize in the stone, or exactly. recognize in our kitchen. After the stone uh, and wash, the stone wash process, it goes to seasoning. It's a soy-based vegetable oil that's Orthodox Union kosher certified. Mm -hmm. It's sprayed on and then baked on at very, very high temperatures. So when it goes to packing, it's black, as if you'd season it 15 or 20 times, and it's ready to use right out of the box. Cast iron, properly seasoned, is the original nonstick, and it's a healthy nonstick because you get your natural daily dose of the mineral iron, which is very important to all of our health, and it's a clean way to cook. It actually goes through a final inspection process, even in packaging. We have people that have been working with the company for decades. They look at each piece. If it passes muster, it's packed. If it doesn't, it's put in a hop hopper and remelt it. Go back and start over. All over again. Now with all of this, how much time are we talking about? From the time it leaves the pouring area to the time it's ended, it's an hour. That's amazing. And the great thing is, depending on the tooling, depending on the pieces we're making, we can run up to 1,600 pieces an hour. A lot of cookware. A lot of great cookware. Our founder, Joseph Lodge, started the company in 1896, was famous for making a statement. There are thousands of way to make, ways to make cast iron wrong. We do it right. right. All right, folks, now you've seen it made, beginning to end. Amazing process. Beautiful finished piece of Lodge cast iron cookware. Now let's go out and see if we can cook in this baby. That one worries me a little because it's so true. Don't you folks go away, we're gonna be right back with you.